they have pretty much the same interaction, with Raditz realizing that he picked up on the wrong power level, and then he eventually ends up attempting another power level and going off to find it to see if it's Kakarot, which, of course, that is him. Back at Kame House, the group is having a nice time seeing each other again, since it's been a while since they've reunited, until an unexpected visitor arrives and interrupts the festivities, Raditz. Not only is he shocked to see his brother alive and being a good-hearted person, but he has two children now. Not only have you become soft, Kakarot, but you've been getting busy. At least that means you've helped expand the Saiyan race. Goku has no idea what Raditz is talking about. And Raditz realizes this, so he then ends up filling Goku on his history and such. Raditz begins to threaten Goku to do what he wants, asking him to either join them or kill 100 people by tomorrow or have the planet be destroyed. And for an incentive for Goku, he gets a kidnap and go to While Goku regains his strength, Piccolo comes over like normal after seeing what happened, and the two of them team up to get Raditz. With Goku actually wanting to join the group, he his father and then kidnap his brother. While the group sees this as not being safe for him, Goku decides to take him anyways since Goku is pretty naive like that, and it would be a good experience for Gohan since he obviously wants to go, and it would give him some nice insight of what fighting is really like. For extra power, Krillin actually decides to join him as well so they can have strength and powers. And they know Rat is way stronger than them, so Krillin wants to help this time just to make sure Gohan is safe, since Goku and Piccolo will be busy with Rat and Gohan will probably need someone to watch him just in case. And if they end up actually needing Krillin, he'll step up to the plate and help them. The four of them end up heading over to where Raditz is, finding Goten trapped inside of Raditz's car, who's obviously pretty happy to see everyone there to save him. Goku, Piccolo, and Raditz begin fighting as normal, with Gohan, Goku, and Krillin watching on. While Raditz is distracted by the fight, Krillin and Gohan take the opportunity and they rush to the pod to free Goten. Raditz notices this and then he fires a blast at Goku. Goku reacts quick and jumps in front of the blast to protect Goku, which badly injures him. His arm took the brunt of that blast, so now it's badly hurt and broken, but he's still able to fight, even though he's nowhere close to Raditz's power level. And with this distraction of Raditz being focused on the group and Goku, Piccolo actually takes the opportunity to go away and charge a special beam cannon as Goku tries to get up after taking that blast. The only bright side to this is that Goku actually gets a rage boost from seeing Raditz try to kill his friend and his two sons. So he ends up fighting Raditz with just one arm, and while it's a nice display of his persistence, it doesn't really do much other than distracting Raditz from what Piccolo is doing. Raditz ends up getting bored, and he punches Goku in the gun, sending him flying before he walks over to him on the ground and prepares to kill him. But out of nowhere, Raditz feels two objects collide with his chest and looks down to see Gohan and Goten. The two were angered by Raditz's action, and they both had temporary boost in power, kind of like Gohan did in the original, and this actually allows the two to charge towards Raditz to injure him. And since it's two of them this time, they do a lot more damage. He's knocked far back, and he actually falls to the ground and angrily picks himself up and charges the double sun they aimed at Goku, Krillin, and the two unconscious kids. He's really angry now and wants to take everyone out. But in that moment, he realizes that the group is one person short, one green person. The Namekian is gone, and before he can even fire the blast, a beam of light pierces through his chest, putting him out of commission. Piccolo has successfully charged the special beam cannon far away and hit him with it, and he ended up killing Raditz easily. Raditz was way too distracted to notice this, and at the last moment when he realized that Piccolo was gone, it was already too late for him. Raditz is defeated, and Goku ends up living this time, with Raditz telling him that the other Saiyans would arrive in a year's time and end up finishing the job and get Kakarot to kill them or kill them and destroy the planet. Goku looks at his dying brother in pity as he begins to get back up, and he watches Raditz slowly bleed out and finally end up dying. While they're now faced with the threat of the Saiyans coming in the future, they're at least happy that all of the group survived and no one actually got injured. Earth also is destroyed by Raditz. The group ends up heading back to the Kame house as they let Goku rest, eventually retrieving a sense of being from fully healed. Piccolo is present with the group and tells everyone what's going on, and how the Saiyans will arrive in a year's time and end up killing Goku and destroying the planet. I debated whether or not they would still try to come, since they don't know about the Dragon Ball right now, but I feel that hearing Goku's group defeated Raditz would be enough for Vegeta and Nappa to want to kill Goku in revenge, since they know he's still alive. And they could potentially come for his two hybrid sons. Goku, along with Gohan and Goten, return to Chi-Chi, where she's still out what happened. And although she's reluctant at first to let them train, and when she hears that Raditz tried to hurt her kids, she's more than happy to let the kids train since she doesn't want the 
you say it's hurting them again. If anything, she's fired up now because she wants revenge against them. And it would be great if her son were able to do that and protect themselves. The one year training begins. After seeing their latent power against Raditz, Goku and Piccolo both want to train the kids to make them strong. Piccolo is frustrated with Goku's training methods and tries to instill a lot of his own methods into the kids. And the two end up working together to train the kids now for her against the same. Piccolo is pretty harsh. The kids have Goku around now to make the training a lot smoother and not feel as harsh. While Piccolo doesn't like how soft Goku is, he deals with this and they need to cooperate to do the same. As part of the training, Piccolo and Goku will leave the two kids in the wilderness to fend for themselves. While Goku and Piccolo will go on by themselves to train to so threat similar power. While it's a scary adjustment at first for Gohan and Goten, they end up getting used to it a lot quicker, and since they're at least together with each other, they're not too scared about being left alone in the wild. They end up getting the hang of it a lot easier than no one did, and adjust to living alone in only a couple of days. The two spend a lot of time sparring as well, with the little of the techniques that they learned from Goku and Piccolo so far here. Eventually, Goku and Piccolo see their progress and how they've adjusted. And now that the kids are independent and can for themselves, they take the kids back for more training after about a few months' time. Goku and Piccolo would either train together, or with the two kids, or sometimes switch off. And this allows the kids to have the lighter, more martial arts oriented training from Goku, as well as the harsher, power increasing training from Piccolo. They end up wearing a lot of different techniques as well. They can send and suppress power, use key blasts, and do things such as the Maseko, Kamehameha, Solar Flare, and other techniques from both Goku and Piccolo. On other occasions, Goku and Piccolo go train by themselves, as Gohan and Goku do the same now that they're powered up, and they learn to fight together with great synergy and try to come up with some combo moves too. After a few more months of training, the group see it as a good idea to meet with Krillin, Yamcha, Tien, and Chao Tzu to try and train with them as well. They all have spent most of their time training on the lookout. Kami welcomes the group on the lookout with somewhat weird interaction with Piccolo, but the two showing a mutual respect. He can sense that Piccolo is kind of changed since he last saw him, and now he's a lot more friendly, as friendly as a demon would be. They still don't know about the Namekians yet and that they're part of that group. Now that they have more people together, the training becomes a lot more effective as the humans can train with Gohan and Goten now and get stronger with Goku and Piccolo. With that, I think it's a good spot to leave off for now. We'd love to...
I win Mr. Beast money or will the hunters take mine? Only three. three. One of, one of, I think you need more hunters than that. I think, it, I think the hunters are up against it. Dreams used to like five hunters. Three or three. three. It's so funny to join the video. Mr. Beast really thought that was going to be like a Well, we're Minecraft now. It's Oh, they hear it. Wait, 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 wait,
That's it, Carol. And the chance of finding no chapel in the first chest is also pretty mm -hmm. likely. You have a 1 in 10 chance of getting one in the chest, like 11%, it's slightly more than 10. So, yeah, like a 1 in 10. Again, uh, I don't know. Again, no chapel 1 is, is, is the place to be. My nature says it's fair, but again, it's still. Why do you have so many axes? You can hold their right axes.